So amongst the battery of tests that we'll run in the clinic, sometimes we actually pop you on our right eye machine. And this is a machine that uh, fires a very uh, uh, laser into the eye, which is completely safe. And then there's a camera that tracks your eye movement. And so the question is, why would we ask you to do that? Well, sometimes we want to get a general information about how well the brain is functioning, because we know every single movement that the eyes can do are controlled and initiated by a different area of the brain. And so when we uh, run the test for you, what actually are the information that the, uh, the, the test will supply? Well, the first thing um, that we'll look at is how well is your ability to fixate on a target. So if I'm looking at a tree across the road or I'm looking at a, 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 an offer in the supermarket, is my eye able to very quickly fixate on the target? And so the way that the test will uh, identify whether you can do that is it will give you a, um, a bullseye, it'll give you a outer rim, a further outer rim, and then a big outer rim here. And so what we want to know is that when I look at the tree there, the information, the light from the tree will hit the front of my eye. And that information then will get refracted by the lens to the back of the eye. And the back of the eye is where we house all of the sensitive photoreceptors that are able to interpret the information from the light. And and sometimes um, we, we used to say when people uh, went to the optician that sometimes people had a rugby shaped eye or maybe had a round eye. And basically what that meant was the length of the eyeball is a little bit different. And so when the light hits the front of the eye, it's when it's refracted to the back of the eye, to the area where we have all the density of photoreceptors that pick up all the information. What we need to see to happen is that you're able to focus the information from the front of the eye to the back of the eye to around about a sensitivity of between zero to two degrees, because that's called your central fovea, and that's where all of the greatest density of your rods and cones, the photoreceptors that interpret the information. So when we see, when you have a test at the opticians and they sit you down and do a Snellen test, which is when you read the letters, they're looking at how well you can refract the information from the light, from the front of the eye to the back of the eye, and whether you can actually hold that at your, um, uh, 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 between zero and two degrees. And the information from the right eye uh, technology that we deploy in clinic is looking at whether or not you can actually do that. And so zero to one degree is good. Zero to two degrees is good. If you're between two to four degrees, that's in your paraphobia. And that means that you're not really able to see it that well, but it's still not awful. But as soon as we get outside four degrees, then that actually becomes very, very bad and means that we really actually can't focus on it very well. So the first test that we're looking to see is how well can you actually fixate on an article of interest? And we want to see that when you really, really concentrate, that you're able to direct the photons, the light from the thing that you're looking at to the back of your eye with a sensitivity of between zero to two degrees. The second task that we want you to look at is actually how well can you follow a target? Because it turns out that our brains can actually only do two things with regard to eye movement. And the first one is actually I can look at something which is either called a fixation, but then if it starts to move off, that's called I'm pursuing the object and that's called a smooth pursuit. And so what my brain has to do is based on the movement of the thing I'm looking at, it needs to predict where it's going and I need to be able to do that again within an accuracy of between zero to two degrees otherwise it becomes blurred and goes out of focus so my brain needs to track how well the movement is occurring across my retina and be able to predict where that thing is going so that's called a smooth pursuit and we want to see how well you're able to do that and then the final thing we say is your brain can either look at something which is called a fixation or if it follow, if I follow something that's called a smooth pursuit, or it can do something else, which is look at something 
or look at something completely different, and that's called a saccade. And that's the most ballistic, it's the quickest and fastest movements that our eyes can actually do. When I look at something for the first time, you might think I just stare at it, but that's actually not what happens. I take in a heat map, I'm looking at everything very, very quickly, my brain is receiving an image of what I'm actually looking at. Similarly, when I read, we imagine we're following the words across the page, but of course that's not the case. What I'm doing is I'm looking at it, I'm taking in an imagery of probably five or six words, then I'm jumping to the next spot, I'm focusing, I'm taking imagery of five or six words, and I'm jumping again, taking imagery of five or six words. And so when I read, that's called a saccade. And so what I want to be able to do is look at an object, and then look at some, an object here, and look at an object here, and back here. And I need to be able to jump onto that and focus directly on it. And that's called a saccade. And so that's the sec second or third, I should say, metric that we're looking at in the clinic, is we're looking at fixation. How well can I look at an object? Number two, how well when the object moves, Moves, can I track and predict how it's moving across my retina? And then the third uh, metric I'm looking at is when I look at something, can I completely lose interest in it, look at something else and dive straight onto it, not hopscotch onto it because it's blurred. And then we put all of this information together to assess in a very general sense how well your central nervous system is working, how well your eyes and your ears are working, because in other videos we've talked about when those things aren't working very well, they are disrupt our ability to create a reflex, sometimes they can create dizziness, sometimes vertigo, certainly they might be a predictor of things like concussion and inflammation in the brain, but in all senses I'm going to tighten up my muscles to try to protect myself and then in those circumstances start to develop pain in different areas of the body.